And now we have Kirchhoff's second rule, the loop rule. Mathematically, it's also a sum. It's the sum, if we go around a loop, that all of the potential differences on the different elements in the circuit will equal zero. So the potential difference, in words, potential difference around a loop is zero. So let's draw a circuit and apply it to see, see how we use this. So we're going to draw just the simplest circuit, our battery with an EMF up here, down to a resistor, and back around. There it is. So step one is to pick a current direction. Just like we did with the junction rule, let's just assume the current flows that way. And I don't need to put a number on it because there's only one current in this case. We only have one loop. OK, pick current direction. And then two, we need to pick a loop direction. They don't have to be the same direction. They won't always be when you get into more complicated circuits. But a loop direction means we're going to walk around this circuit, think about the potential. Therefore, we have to go in some direction. So I like to draw something like that, meaning we're going to go clockwise around the loop. You could go counterclockwise if you wanted to, but I usually just, I just always go clockwise just to avoid confusion. And then you kind of need a starting place. You've got to pick somewhere to start. OK, so let's do it. So then what you do is then, step three, let's say, is imagine a test charge. What that means is, imagine a test charge is sitting here, and let's think about all the potential differences it goes through because it goes all the way around the loop, all right? So here we go. So I'm a test charge. Test charges are small and positive, so I'm a positive charge. I'm moving through this wire, and we know there's essentially no potential drop across the wire. We assume the wires are nice and conductive until it gets to here. And now we have a resistor. So it has a delta V. It has a potential drop. It has current flowing through it. We need to put in the delta V of this potential, of this test charge as it goes from here to here. We know this is the high potential, you have a potential drop across the resistor. So we know it goes down. And we know the potential of the delta V is IR. So now we just got to figure out what to put. Well, we are trying to figure out the potential across the resistor plus the potential across the battery. It's going to be equal to 0. So what do we put here? It's actually negative IR because it's a potential drop. Or if you think of it as a change, it's going from, this low, from a high value to a low value. So it's the low value minus the high value. So when you go through a circuit with the current, imagining your test charge, it's negative IR is the delta V, is the potential there. And then you keep going, and we get to the battery. Well, we know that the battery drives uh, current flow, some electrochemical reaction in here. And we know this is the negative terminal, and this is the positive terminal. The longer line is always the positive terminal. So if you're a little test charge, you're here at a low potential. You go here, you go up to a higher potential. The final minus the initial is positive. So this is plus um, E, plus the EMF equals 0. All right. And then you solve that and see, well, this is the answer. And does it make sense? And in this case, it does. It just gave us um, Ohm's law. We know that the EMF from the battery equals IR. So that's how you do it, is you walk through the circuit. Now, you could do something weird. You don't really have to guess this current the right way. In more complicated circuits, you might guess the current the wrong way. So let's imagine what would have happened if we had said, oh, maybe the current will go that way. All right, we can do it real quick. If the current's going that way, and I'm a test charge walking this way, I'm going against the current. If the current's going that way, then this will be the high potential side, and this will be the low potential side of the resistor. So whenever you go against the current in your loop, then it's plus IR. Okay? And then you come up to this battery. Now, even though the current we've guessed one way or the other way, it doesn't matter. A battery always has low potential here and high potential here. So for the battery, it's still plus the EMF. Okay? So the resistor cares about the current flow direction. When you're getting the delta V, the battery does not. 
if you solve this, you get something and you say, wait, this doesn't look right. That doesn't look like Ohm's law. The EMF is negative IR, but that is right because we guessed the current the wrong way. If you have the current set up this way, you better get a negative value for the current because we know it's really going to go that way. And sure enough, Kirchhoff's law is correct. Okay? So you actually can get any current direction, any loop direction, doesn't matter. You'll get the right answer. Just in most cases, if you can see which way the current goes, it's better to guess the, the right way.